The basis of linear algebra is solving systems of linear equations. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do that in Mathematica, and I'm going to show you two different ways. Okay, so we look at this first example. I have three equations, x1 plus x3 equals 2, negative 2x2 plus 3x3 equals 3, and 2x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 equals 1. I'm going to show you how to solve this. Okay, so in Mathematica, all I have to do is just use the solve function, and I'm going to list my equations as a list, and I have x1 plus x3, and now here's a common mistake. If I just say z equals 2 like that, then that is assigning the value 2 to the sum of x1 plus x3. That's not what we meant to do. I meant to set the equation x1 plus x3 equals 2 as an equation. So there's my first one. I do the same thing with the others. Equals equals 3, and then 2x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 equals equals 1. Okay, so there's my list of equations. And then I have to list the variables. If you notice, in Mathematica right now I have the variables are listed in blue. It's because Mathematica doesn't understand what those values are supposed to be. So once I put in x1, x2, and x3, notice everything turns that kind of dark turquoise color. Okay, from there I'm ready to go. Just hit shift enter, and here's my solution. Now notice these are parametric solutions. So here at x2 means is 3 halves minus 3x1 over 2. x3 is 2 minus x1. Okay, so here that means that x1 is free to be anything. You let x1 be t, is what we typically write on paper. And that means I can pick any real number for x1, and that'll give me a new solution for x2 and x3. Now, if you don't want to solve these for x1, you want to solve them for a different variable. Okay, so a lot of times we like we like everything to be in terms of our last variable, then what I can do here is just go and relist the order of my variables. So I can have x3, x1, x2, because I want to solve this thing for x in terms of x3. So there I have it. x1 is 2 minus x3, and x2 is negative 3 halves plus 3x3 over 2. And there's my solution. Okay, now uh, for part b, I have four variables and three equations. So because of that, I know this is going to be parametric as well, unless it's an inconsistent system. But this time, I don't want to use the solve function, because I didn't like writing all the x1s and stuff. I'm going to use the matrix version of doing this. So here, I'm going to let this matrix be called MAT, but you can name it whatever you want. And a matrix is just a list of lists. So my first list here is 1, 3, 1, 4, 5. Hope you can see where I got that. That's just the coefficients of my first equation. My second one is 2, 1, 1, 1, 7. And my third one is 2, 3, 2, 5, 10. And I need to put that in a list like that. Okay. So if I hit Shift Enter, all I've done was make a matrix. If you want it to look like what you see in a textbook, you can do matrix form. And there it is. There's the matrix in its beautiful matrix form. Okay, but now to actually solve the system of equations, I'm going to use row reduce. So I'm going to do row reduce on MAT. And that's going to put, that's going to do Gauss Jordan elimination on this matrix. And so here's what I have 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Since Gauss-Jordan elimination gave us a dependent system, meaning we have an infinite number of variables, from there, it's not as obvious what my solutions are going to be. So I could do this. I could do another solve, and I'm going to have x1 minus x4 equals equals 2. Okay, so this time I'm doing the same system of equations, but it, it's in a reduced form, so it's a little bit less work. x2 plus x4 equals equals 0, and lastly, x3 plus 2x4 equals equals 3. And I want this in terms of x4. Typically we do. We want it in terms of our last variable. So I'm going to hit solve there. There I have it. x1 is 2 plus x4. x2 is negative x4. And x3 equals 3 minus 2x4. Okay, so typically we would say then let's let x4 be t. t representing some arbitrary real number. And then we get an infinite number of solutions based off that. I want to look at one more example because I want to show an example where you don't have to use parametric representation to get your solutions. In other words, you get a consistent system that only has 
one solution. All right, so this time for my third one, I'm going to solve x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9 for the first equation, negative x plus 3y equals negative 4, and 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. All right, so I'm going to proceed using the matrix direction here. So I'm going to define another matrix. Let's call it mat2. And again, a matrix is a list of lists. So my first list is just the coefficients of the first equation. 1 minus 1, negative 2, 3, and 9. Then we had negative 1, 3, 0, and negative 4. And 2, negative 5, 5, 17. So there's my matrix. Okay, now I can just do row reduce on that matrix. And there are my solutions. So that means I have x1 is 1, or x is 1, y is negative 1, and z equals 2. We've used gauss jordan elimination to get in a reduced row echelon form, and so it's easy to pick out our solutions from there. Okay, I also want to mention that you don't have to take your matrix and set it equal to some name like mat2 and then put that in row reduce. You could simply take your matrix and just say row reduce, put in your matrix, and close it up, and there it is. Okay, it takes out some of the margin of error if you just label it mat2 and then just do row reduce mat2, but that's up to you. You don't really have to do that. Mathematica is a great tool for helping us solve systems of linear equations like this, but don't let it be a substitute for understanding how to do it yourself, okay? So this is an, a tool to enhance us and to help us with our work to get things done quickly, but we still should have a good understanding of what we're doing. If you have any questions on this, I'd be glad to help, and thank you for watching. <laughs>